In our next video here on depth time relationships, we're going to take a look at how we import and apply check shot data. So we're going to revisit the model we had previously real quick. And if we recall, we had a setting up here under well depth and elevation settings. And we check the box right here that says the US, use the LAS depth range, which is our top measured depth to our bottom measured depth. Uh, from the LAS file, and we gave defined a reference elevation of 50 feet of our log reference over the surface. So in essence, our Kelly bushing reference over where our seismic synthetic reference will be. Then we came over and we said synthetics set our depth time controls, and our only option was to specify that start time, and that's the time from the surface down to that first depth in our well log. That's the two-way travel time there. So that's where we left it. Now what we're going to do is import some check shot data. So normally this comes in the form of some tabulated file. We can import any uh, delimited file uh, and pull that check shot information in. And the way we do that is we go to well, check shot. Okay, so we're going to apply a check shot for this well. So the screen right here is so we've got a little import button across the top where we're going to open the file. We could, if we wanted to, actually type in the data into the spreadsheet. And this is our check shot true vertical depth and our two-way travel time right here. And these data points would show up on the, uh, on the curve on the right. Um, the other thing that we noticed that our log reference minus our surface reference, our delta ref, is 50 feet, which is what we defined before. And there's a little... Uh, help button here. If we click on there, there's an image, and this pops up what we've seen previously. So we know when we're entering what it's in relationship to. So our check shot data, at where our check shot TVD is going to be zero, is at the surface, and that's where our time is zero. So when we enter a check shot data, this is what it is in reference to. And then this delta ref, that's the, the height above the surface where our well log reference begins. So to import a file, we click the open folder up here, and we hit open, and I have a file, a CSV file, uh, in my local area set there. Now this is an import wizard that um, we also use to import wavelets, very similar. But we have what's shown in this data preview button down here. This is the data that's in our file that I just selected. It just read it in its text, but it really doesn't know exactly what's what. So we have to tell it, the first thing is, that we're going to start the import at row number. And we see the first row, in this case, is actually column header. So we don't want that. So we're going to increase that to row 2. And we notice when we change that, the, the highlight change to show where our data will start. And I can scroll down over here and see how far down that data goes. Okay. Now, um, we also see that... Um, the delimiter that we have in here, this is a comma delimiter. So I'm going to hit the delimiter is a comma. And that will get us ready to go to the next uh, step in our wizard. One thing I'll notice before we get started that it, according to our column data, our first column is the TBD in meters. And our second column is one-way travel time in milliseconds. Okay, so that's good to remember. And we're going to then hit the next button. Okay, now what it's done, it's broken that data up into the columns per the direction that we gave it previously, which was to break it apart at every comma. And then what we want to do is we need to tell the import wizard what data is in this column. And if I hit the ignore button here, that's one of the options. It drops down. I could have TVD in feet, in meters. I could have my time first, one way or two way. Uh, or if I had a column that was data that I didn't need, I would just hit the ignore button. Now, we, I said when we look before the headings in this particular file told us what it was, but if you can't remember, just hit the back button right there. Yeah, that's right, it was TVD in meters and one way in milliseconds. So my first column is TVD in meters, and this time is one way in milliseconds. Okay, so now we're going to read in this data, and I hit the finish button, and all these data points pop in here. It fills in the data here. This is our check shot TVD. What is check shot TVD? Let's click this little image button here. Okay, check shot TVD. That's where a TVD of zero on the check shot is at the surface, and our time is zero. We always like to have that point in there. And all these data points are filled in here, and if I scroll down, I can see all the way down to the bottom. It 
5,100 uh, feet, and it's been converted. Even though we pulled it in meters, it displayed it in feet. Why did it display it in feet? Because we're currently showing all of our depth on our well log in feet, so we try to keep this consistent. Now, we've got a bunch of stuff mushed up in here, but we have zoom controls that we should be familiar with, and I can hit my dynamic zoom and zoom up in here. So I see our TVD and our data points, and that's 0 0.072 seconds. 095 and again this is one way travel time so these are the data points that we pulled in for our check shot if I wanted to edit these you could come over here and edit them um, but generally speaking uh, if you're going to trust the data that's been provided to you for check shot you're not going to edit that data so now when I hit accept um, and I'm going to save my project I'm going to go to file save that check shot data in the information that was specified, the TVD in meters and the one-way travel time milliseconds, that's now saved with your project file. So that external check shot file is not needed. You don't have to carry it around with you. So now it's there. So what does this mean to our model? I'm going to go back to this well depth and elevation settings right here. Okay, we know our well log starts 50 feet above the surface and our check shot data is going to start at the surface. Okay, but this is, gives us our depth and elevation settings. But we're going to go to synthetics depth time controls. Now we see we have a few more options that, are, that have become enabled. Previously we specified our start time because we didn't have check shot data. And we told the application that our two-way travel time from the surface down to that first measure, measured depth, which is a log MD of 680, um, was at 0 0.207 seconds and that's to travel a total of actually 630 feet because it's 680 feet from the Kelly bushing but I'm, I've got 50 feet elevation up here so we told it that it was 0 0.207 but now we have check shot data and I can say use the check shot start time and it's computed that check shot start time so based on what we enter this is the it determines the two-way travel time it also takes into account this delta ref so it looks at the check shot time and said okay what was the travel time to get you down to 630 feet from the data you entered or down to our first well log point at a log depth of 680 feet so I'm going to say use that check shot start time now I also have an option down at the bottom that says check shot to use the check shot correction I'm going to ignore that for right now so we're going to hit OK so the only thing we've done and I'm going to go to my synthetics and my 1D model and I'll scroll up using my mouse wheel I know that my I can see that my log depth uh, at 680 feet starts at 0.23 seconds that's what the check shot data told us uh, to do so just to make sure I'm going to close this window I'm going to go back to my check shot data you can always review it Go to well, check shot, and I can look at here. 680 feet is somewhere between 0.2 and 0.3 in this in these in this row, um, and it's somewhere between 0.096 and 2.48. So it's probably about you know 0.13, but we were 1.1 or so. But what was displayed was 0.23. Well, the reason is this is one-way time in our synthetics and everything else. We're dealing with two-way time that conversion is handled uh, automatically by tips okay so now we have a synthetic um, that the only thing it's using from the check shot is its start time and I'll go back to the synthetic view it one more time for a point of reference okay it's right here now once we get to this point the depth time relationship is dictated entirely by this sonic data right here so how fast we're traveling um, over any range of depth gives us our two-way travel time so this sonic curve is dictating what it is. The check shot data, other than giving us a starting point, is doing nothing. But we did import all those other check shot points. So now we're going to go to synthetics, set depth time controls, and I'm just going to come down here to the bottom. I'm going to say use check shot correction, and I'll hit OK. Now I'm going to go to my synthetic 1D model. And we notice a few things. At all times in our synthetic menus, the depth time information is set down here. So depth time, our log start time is 0.231 seconds. Check shot correction is applied. We have no stretch and squeeze applied, no static time shift. Okay, so we had all those points. Now the other thing we'll notice is you see these red dots on the line. These are your check shot data points. See that red dot and that red dot? You can turn those off and on by going to view, show check shot markers. And if I turn that off, they're gone. View, show check shot markers are there. I'm going to scroll down using my mouse wheel. 
and you see all these red points come in here. Th these are the check shot corrections uh, that were imported there. So what the application does is it reads this depth time relationship and takes that and uh, corrects the sonic to get to those points, then it applies a smoothing factor to it so that we get a nice smooth check shot corrected sonic curve that is then defining our depth time relationship. So if we were to look at this large trough event here, for instance, where my mouse is, which is uh, occurring at a rate about you know half a second uh, right at that trough, and which is also um, at about you know a little 1450 feet. If I close this and I go back to synthetics depth time controls and say don't use the check shot correction, go to my synthetics 1D model, and that trough is now at about 0.511. So that it's at the same depth, obviously, but the time is different because the time has not <clears throat> been check shot corrected. And it tells us at the bottom no check shot correction. And I can't obviously show or hide the red dots on there because I haven't applied it. But if I go back to synthetics, set depth time controls, and hit use check shot corrections, synthetics 1D models, and there we go. Now we've got the check shot correction applied. And once I do this, this apply, set these depth time uh, settings, whenever I go to any AVO synthetic wedge model and everything else, or get ready to go to a, do a well tie, that's the depth time uh, relationship that we're going to use. Now, in the next video with regard to depth time, we're going to pull it into a well tie and show how that works, and we can work that independently, and we'll apply a static shift to the thing, to the entire synthetic.